I can think of few more ghastly fates, or at least more ghastly states, than that of the suicidal individual that is only being held back by a fear of death. Um, it's, uh, it must be a terrible situation to be in, but I'm sure there are plenty of people who are in that situation. People who are depressed, who are sick and tired of life, who uh, uh, have a negative view of life itself, who have a, um, a desire to have it all ended or have it all um, blotted out or have themselves or whatever taken away from all of this. And yet there's a terrible fear of death or the, act, the action of killing oneself. Now, um, in spite of what some people might think, I don't have um, a completely dismissive view of the subject of suicide. I alluded to that in a few other videos. Um, my favorite depiction of suicide is Yukio Mishima's um, short story called uh, Patriotism, in which he describes a Japanese military officer in the 1920s committing seppuku, which is the ritual disemboweling of oneself, the most honorable way to die, next to, I suppose, being killed in combat. Um, the uh, soldier in question had been ordered to move against some of his fellow officers because they had, uh, had attempted to overthrow the Japanese government and they had failed. He was a member of a quote-unquote loyal regiment, a regiment loyal to the government, and he was put in a position where he had to go after his fellow officers with whom he sympathized. So he solved the whole thing by killing himself. Now, <laughs> the, um, the story is interesting in that Yukio Mishima, as we all know, eventually committed seppuku as well, um, and he did it under very similar circumstances. And um, the, uh, the whole tone of the thing is very heroic, and the, the Japanese officer is considered, by the end of the story, extremely heroic, and uh, he comes to, and his death, in all its goriness and, and sloppiness and everything, is considered a beautiful thing. Now, it's a little bit perverse to say that, but I tend to actually agree with Mishima's depiction of this sort of thing, death as triumph. But the thing is, you see, this kind of death requires courage. This kind of death requires determination. And this death is not rushing from life, but ending it on one's own terms and making sure that everybody jolly well knows that you're ending it on your own terms, because it's the one of the worst possible ways I can imagine to die. Ritual self-disembowelment. Oh, dreadful, but that's the whole point. That's exactly why the Japanese evolved this form of death, because it's so ghastly. And it's self-imposed. It's saying, see how little I fear you, see how little I fear death. I, uh, there are other things that are more important to me than just having my heart continue to beat. Now, if you can actually see seppuku that way, or any number of ritual suicides that exist throughout many cultures, um, I think that it, it in, a, in a bizarre sort of sense, increases your appreciation for life. Because it, for life to mean something, it has to have meaning beyond itself, and we're all going to die. Um, but you people believe in things beyond life, and the ultimate expression of the belief in something larger than life is suicide making a point. Um, I, you know, it's it does take courage. It's not simply rushing from something. Um, but that kind of suicide takes courage, and I would also um, state that for some people, living takes courage. Uh, not wanting to kill yourself simply because you're uh, terrified of death is not really courage. Staying alive and avoiding suicide is not a sign of courage. But if you don't have that option because you are terribly afraid of death, um, then uh, you often have you often find that you have no choice. You are cornered. You are cornered. You're in an, you're an, in an impossible moral situation or an, in an untenable situation. Therefore, you say, I have no choice but to live. It's not an option for me to die, and I have faced that fact because I do not have it in me to kill myself. Therefore, I have no option but to live. A lot of people in their youth uh, read Herman Hesse's Steppenwolf, um, 
one of his more famous stories, and it's actually when most people read it in their youth, I did, where it's, it's actually written for more people my age, people in their late 40s, early 50s. And um, it's where a man who is afraid to die realizes he has no choice but to learn to live, and he learns to live, and it's not an easy or a pretty process. It's hard. But at the end of the story, he learns to live. The morbid antinatalist sort of set, if there is such a thing, is in an unfortunate situation in that, well, they're kind of the classic sort of wimp, where um, one is in an intolerable situation, but all that one does is complain. They don't heed the advice of uh, the Shawshank Redemption, get busy living or get busy dying. I gave, a tr I gave an example of someone who got busy dying, the, uh, the lieutenant in uh, Yukio Mishima's story, uh, Patriotism. And I gave an example of someone who um, got busy living because they had no choice. Um, to the uh, Japanese officer, it was intolerable that he should continue to live. His life would not be worth anything in his own eyes. Uh, if he had done what he was being ordered to do, but he could not resist the orders of a superior officer, so he said, there's only one way out, let's just get this over with. And um, and he did it heroically. And the character, Harry Holler, in Steppenwolf, said, fine, I can't kill myself. My life is intolerable, but I can't kill myself. I've got no bloody choice but to learn to live. If everyone was going to ask me how I managed to overcome the depression that I speak of that happened to me so long ago, it was I, re I reached that situation. I realized, get busy living or get busy dying, and, well, I guess I got busy living so far, because I certainly feel much better than I did back then. But again, if you're stuck in a situation where you can't live and you can't die, um, that, to me, is the ultimate in morbid antinatalism. Um, and I think that someone who is in that situation should assess their, 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 their position a lot more dispassionately and get on with it. Uh, most of us, you will find, will actually get busy living. Thank you.